I am sitting in a Foley room that is quite different from the one you are in now, as this has been designed to be as acoustically neutral as possible. You can hear there is no reverberation in this room, and this condenser microphone adds a warmth to my voice. This room is only my starting point, however. By changing my recording location, you and I are able to sonically experience new environments and the objects therein. This short film is made to illustrate the different sonic qualities of varied locations. We should be recording in several very different places. Listening to the changed sonic properties of them, the events happening in them, and the quality of my narration when in them. Well, that was interesting. You will have noticed, I'm sure, that those recordings were made in two-channel stereo. Two-channel stereo recordings can add a sense of depth for some people, often remarking that it is more natural. Although, binaural microphones will do this better. You all have been aware of the loudness of the sound. That's a style I copied from Robert Bresson, who used unusual amplitude and foregrounding of sound to great effect in his films. Now we are listening to the recordings I made at dawn in my garden. Listen as I roam the garden with my microphone, seeking the sounds of the suburban morning soundscape. In Patrick Keeler's work, long, lingering natural shots are commonly used with minimal ambient sound to solidly lock our knowledge of the type of location. Keeler uses the middle-class, slightly monotonous voice of actor Paul Schofield. I'm unsure about that way of working. I am now on a train. I am talking quietly as a lot of people are using mobile phones and I do not want to disturb them. Let's have a listen to the train itself through contact microphones. Not only is it interesting, but it emits the dullard tedium of these mobile telephone conversations. Wow, those contact microphones really do create a different sonic world, don't they? Contact microphones pick up vibration alone, so only a negligible amount of airborne sound is transduced. I'm sure you'll agree, train travel has never sounded like that before. Well, well, looks like that was a cheeky Stan Brackage moment. Brackage was a noted user of silence. I apply the technique here with no prior warning to you to see what your reactions would be to this unexpected solid void. Let us now explore the avant-garde. Here I am filming on location, but we'll be adding sound later. This process is called post-production, or post for short. Quite a head rush, that. That's some crazy scene we've created there. And what we have done is borrow ideas from 60s and 70s experimental filmmaking, juxtaposing images and sound in an asynchronous manner. I hope you have enjoyed this film. Remember, keep your ears open. Goodbye. <laughs>